So yesterday is the first time I've had the chipper shredder out. The first time in 2022 and here it is middle of June already. Uh, normally I have it out in the early spring to get rid of all the tree limbs and stuff that fell down over the winter. And then cleaning up through all the spring storms where limbs get blown out of the trees and trees get blown over and all that stuff and I'm just running super behind. Um, since I got cancer, it takes me way longer to do things, but, and that kind of brings up this next thing. So back in the winter time, my dishwasher went bad and I basically drug it out here and just bought a new one. Didn't feel like messing with it, but all of these boxes you see sitting everywhere is from Amazon. All the stuff I've ordered from Amazon. Now, this isn't really necessarily something that new. What is new is this. It used to be, before I got cancer, I had a super heavy-duty paper shredder that would actually do all this cardboard box easy-peasy. The problem is you got to break the boxes down, remove the tape from it, remove the staples, and shove it through the paper paper shredder and uh, that's just time consuming and because it takes me so much longer to do day-to-day -day task I just couldn't keep up with shredding the boxes the bad thing about that is Amazon boxes and cardboard boxes in general plus grass clippings plus the tree limbs that I shred all of that is part of my compost along with the rabbit manure, the chicken manure, and the goat manure. But since I got cancer, I had to get rid of the chickens, the rabbits, and the goats. So I have less material to work with for the compost pile. So that makes these cardboard boxes and the leaves that fall off the trees and that sort of thing a lot more important than it used to be so I was looking for a faster way to shred these boxes and one of my YouTube viewers I'll have to look up the name to find out who I'll put it in the screen right now uh, had mentioned that they had asked me on my review of the chipper shredder if it would do uh, like stacks of newspapers and I was like huh I don't really know, but I'd love to know if it worked. And then, sometime later, they come back and said that it worked great. You see where I'm going with this? I have the chipper shredder next to the cardboard boxes. Chipper shredder. Cardboard boxes. Chipper shredder. Cardboard boxes. All morning today, I've been standing here like jump into the chipper shredder. And the cardboard boxes have not jumped into the chipper shredder even one time. I don't understand. It should work. I'm like, hey, boxes, jump into the chipper shredder. Nothing. See, that means I'm going to have to intervene and do something to make that happen. So uh, let me show you what I got going on here. I couldn't find my one that was used. I think it's I think it's out in a building. But anyways, I had a couple of these I bought. Sarah used to use these all the time. I had never owned one. It's basically just a, a box cutter. I had never owned one. But um, after she used it all the time, then I used hers a couple times. I went out and bought like three or four of them. And two of them, three of them were still brand new in the package. The other one's around here somewhere. I've forgotten where it's at. Anyways. This right here is you can feed stuff in the top of this. Now they're actually made to feed like small twigs and branches and leaves. And then you got this chute over here, which reminds me I got to answer another uh, YouTube viewer's question. I haven't gotten to yet. Hasn't, I haven't forgotten about it. Well, I kind of did until I was just talking about it. But they want to know what's the largest branch you can put fit through there. And let me just say my fist won't fit either direction so i will take and go by we'll go by this one so that's pretty close if i only had three fingers it would fit i need to measure what three fingers wide is that will fit in there 
providing the branch is perfectly straight that's kind of where they get you at because you see that tube right there that tube is probably mm, 18 inches now that says up to three inches in diameter i would agree with that providing providing that the limb does not have a curve for 18 inches because if you're right at that limit and if it curves even one degree in 18 inches you're going to be too big so that's kind of uh, i guess i just answered it by based on what's on the that and i would agree i have gotten three inch limbs to go in there but they were really straight limbs um and, and they go in pretty easy I don't think that you would get like three and a quarter inch or even three and an eighth of an inch if it's got even a little bit of a curve in it. All right, so back to this. So if we look at this, what we've got is I have to figure out a way. Now see my cell phone, which is an LG V30, will not fit down that slot. It would this way, but not this way. So I need to figure out how big or how wide my cardboard could be and when i tested this yesterday i'll tell you what i was doing i was basically just bending the cardboard and sticking it in there but the reason why i brought this knife is because it'd be much quicker if i just cut it into the right size strips and put it in there that way so i just need to find something that fits with a little bit of a gap and that's going to be my template you know what looks just about like this <laughs> i had to work on the chipper shredder yesterday let me tell you why two year old stale gas um but it wasn't a lot of stale gas it was actually only the gas that was in the float bowl right here and all i had to do was take this bolt out use that old coffee can over there to capture the stale gas that come out and I, I noticed as it was coming out because I did have to put gas in the tank so the tank might have had some stale gas in it but it was mixed in with other gas uh, fresh gas so I think that kind of balanced it out and once I drained out this stale gas from this uh, little tank right here on the bottom of the carburetor put the screw back in and I yanked and yanked and yanked on this starting rope 700 times and it would not start but that is to no fault of the chipper shredder because let me tell you something i was over here messing with this i tried it to start it in the start position which is where you're supposed to be with the fuel on and then this set up you know off idle which is your throttle i yanked and yanked and yanked and yanked then I come over here and said, well, maybe it's something else. So I put it on run. I flipped this to off. I flipped it to on. I changed the throttle. I pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled. Would not start. I'm like, what the heck is wrong with this? So I take the spark plug out. And the spark plug was fouled. So I took a, a lighter and dried the spark plug out and put it back in and I pulled and pulled and pulled and still wouldn't start. So I take the spark plug back out and I dry it out again. And uh, I go get some starting fluid. Spray it. Loosen up this nut right here and spray starting fluid inside the air filter box. I pull and pull and pull. And things still wouldn't start. And I'm like, this thing always starts on the first pull. What the heck is going on? I'm sitting here trying to figure it out. I'm sitting here trying to figure it out. And I'm like reading all these labels like I've forgotten something. What I forget? I get over here on the side and it says, Step one, fill engine oil and stabilizer treated fuel. All right, we did that. Two, clear out back panel and discharge. Well, so what they're talking about is this back panel right here has got three bolts on it. So I took those three off. I found a mouse nest in there. You can kind of see the red. I had to brush it all out. Huh. Mouse nest in there. When I disturbed that 
mouse nest, there must have been five or six mice come running out of the chute on the side, but it still wouldn't start. So then I was like, what the heck's going on? It says, uh, step three, for cold engine, move choke to start position, which I did. Step four, open fuel valve, which I did. Step five, slide throttle lever to third way from slow, which I did. Step six, turn the engine switch on. What? Turn the engine on off switch to on. Where in the heck is the dang on off switch? I totally forgot about it. You know why? Because it's hidden right there. <laughs> and if you look close enough, it actually says on and off. So the whole time I was trying to start this thing, I had to sit to off. That explains it. I get it turned on, starts on the first pull every time since. So yeah, stupid me. RTFM, right? Read the flubbing manual. <laughs> Either way, that's that's kind of what the problem was. So I'm gonna find something, a stick or something that's about the size of this. I'm gonna get these boxes cut up, then we're gonna feed them through here. I'm gonna show you how quickly this works. This is how to make shredding boxes fun again. Elect me for president. I will make it happen. I already know the solution. This is going to be fun. Be right back. All right, folks. Just so you know, I've lost about 50 pounds of weight, and I have on a pair of shorts that I would normally work in when I weighed 50 pounds heavier. So if my shorts fall down, I am sorry. Maybe I'll get a few extra views and likes like some of these other people on YouTube do. One of the things about shredding uh, boxes for use in a compost pile, though, is you have to remove any tape. So packing tape's got to be tore off. That kind of makes it fun. Not impossible. You got to remove. Can we see that? Got to remove the tape. I'm going to start a pile just for the tape. All right. That's good enough for demonstration purposes.
So yeah. Anyways, that's a pretty big bundle of uh, cardboard. And you can actually see cardboard on the ground because I didn't have this on there tight enough. That was actually yesterday. I'm going to sweep all that up anyways. But uh, I still have a lot more cardboard to go, but I just wanted to show you. So now I have all this shredded cardboard that will break down much quicker in the compost pile. And uh, that's kind of what this video is about, just to show you that it's possible. And uh, anyways, thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. Now, if it was only battery powered with the cost of gas.